Hey everybody, welcome back to the A-Bomb Grilling Pad. So today I am getting ready to cook one of Abby and I's favorite cast iron dishes in the uh, camp oven, which is the roasted chicken with vegetables. So I showed this recipe on a uh, recent video when we went camping down at Reagan's Family Campground that uh, this, this same cook is gonna be in that video right there. You can check that out. But since we were gonna go ahead and set up and do this again, I thought I would kind of make a like more dedicated video uh, to this recipe and how I cook this and uh, show you how to do it. So it's, uh, like I said, it's one of our favorites and the chicken comes out super delicious. This is not like grilled chicken. Uh, it's just a different type of cook whenever you cook it in the uh, the camp oven or the Dutch oven. There's a, a lot of people want to call them Dutch ovens. It's a Dutch oven. It's a camp oven. What I like to call them is a Dutch camp oven and camp oven for short. So just just so you know, I'm I, I like calling them camp ovens. So anyway, let me turn you around here and show you the setup. I'm going to show you uh, something new that I'm testing out here as well. So I'm using the two burner. Camp Chef outdoor stove right here. And then of course we got our 12 inch uh, deluxe camp oven right here. And uh, before we get into this, I was gonna talk to you about what I'm doing right here. You might notice this uh, deflector plate right there. All right, I am testing this out for the first time. This is gonna be a trial and see if my theory works on this. But what what I wanna use, I wanna try to utilize on the for the bottom heat the propane, the propane heat instead of putting coals on the bottom. Coals on the bottom work great. I'll put my griddle plate right here on one side, put the coals in there, set the pot on top. It does a great job. But just to try to make it a little bit easier, I'm wanting to try to utilize that heat on the bottom. So what I've done, I have my buddy Lance cut out a couple of plates. This one right here is the 12 inch, what I'm calling the 12 inch for the 12 inch pot. I've got the whole pattern burned out to where it meets the corner radius of the pot we kind of come down here and look you see that corner radius right at the bottom you can see the holes are just meeting that so the theory is the the heat from the gas flame is going to come up hit the corner of the pot and transfer it through it okay so so far it's been heating up really well and it's looking like it's going to do good so i'm going to continue this is the test and i want to keep testing this and seeing if it's going to work let me bring you down here to this other one so this is the same thing, just so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is going to be for the 10 inch camp oven that I have. The only difference is the hole pattern is a little bit smaller diameter. So it will match up with the bottom radius of the 10 inch pot. And this one right here was just a goof up. <laughs> Lance uh, had the wrong size programmed in his, uh, in his plasma cam. So uh, this one is just a uh, ornament, I guess. Okay. So, that's what we're going to be trying out and I am getting it good and hot. So we're going to, hopefully that's going to work out. So for this recipe, what you're going to need, obviously you're going to need a chicken. This is the one that we've got. This is actually a big chicken, but Abby picked this up at the store. It's almost eight pounds. So kind of a hefty, uh, hefty chicken there. All right. The recipe also calls for carrots, onions, and potatoes, and uh, also some garlic. I got to where I started getting this garlic here just because it's so much easier to uh, pull these out of the bag and throw them in there. And to me, they taste just as good as, as uh, you know, a raw, fresh garlic. I know I got people that's going to disagree with me on that, but this is, I, I like using that right there. Okay. Also, you're going to need some rub, whatever kind of rub you like. It's, it doesn't really matter. This is my A-bomb all-purpose rub. Still got some of that left. So we're going to use this for both on the chicken and on the vegetables okay going to need a little bit of oil to put in there this is just olive oil also going to need some potatoes we like the uh, red potatoes and then i like using my timer so i recommend everybody pick you up some kind of timer this is the thermoworks extra big and loud timer i like using that so i'm going to go ahead and start getting all this prepped and i will bring you guys back when we're ready to start do our cooking all right oh and don't forget your favorite cold adult beverage all right, so we're getting ready to uh, prep the chicken and get it in the pot. We've already got all of the veggies prepped. I don't have any exact amounts to give you on this recipe. Um, if I had to 
guess you know you're gonna want maybe two or three pounds of veggies total but as far as what i got in there we have small onions this particular bag we have are small so i used three small onions i think i used six red potatoes and it, it was five carrots total usually i just grab about five or six of the biggest ones that i have in the bag and then trim i, I usually trim the little pieces off and i i snack on those whenever i'm out here cooking so that's the veggies we'll get back to those later but i wanted to show you this because i talked about this in the in the last video a lot of times when you get these chickens they're going to have these fat flaps on the back right here okay so there's a lot back here i'm going to cut both of these off right here and i'm going to take those and cut them in half and i'm going to slide them underneath the skin you just very gently lift this skin without tearing it and try to slide that fat up underneath the breast in a couple of places so that you're cooking you're using the natural fat from the chicken itself to help try to moisturize these chicken breasts. All right, we've got our chicken seasoned, just using my uh, all-purpose rub. I dry it, I dry the water off of it, and then I just give it just a little bit of coating of oil and then season it good on both sides. I've already got the little fat pieces down underneath the skin, so we're ready to pick this guy up. We've got a pot that should be good and hot now, and we're gonna set it down in there. And what we're gonna do is cook it on both sides for about five minutes. All right, we should be good and hot. Probably gonna be hotter than what I wanted, actually. No, it seems to be just right, actually. That's just a piece that I cut off there just to test it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it um, breast side down first, lay it in there. I'll start a timer, let's cook it for five minutes, then we're gonna flip it over and cook the other side for five minutes. Just like that, all right? So while the chicken is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and light me some coals. So what I've got is a small chimney here with 16 charcoal briquettes. I'm gonna go ahead and get those things started, getting them burned in. And this is the way I usually light them. Just makes it nice and easy. All right, we've been cooking five minutes. All right, that's looking good, it's sounding good. You hear that little frying sound. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and let's we'll see if I can do this without burning myself. I want to flip it over just like that right there. And this is what I've been experiencing with trying to uh, separate the skin and put the fat in there. The skin's actually trying to tear. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's going to be a good technique for me doing this or not, but, you know, we're just going to roll with it. While the other side of the chicken is cooking, what we're going to do is go ahead and get our uh, vegetables prepped. So I'm just going to put a little bit more oil in there, some olive oil. I just give it a good shake, roll it around. All right, and then we're going to use some more of this um, all-purpose rub down in there. It's excellent. So I had a lot of people ask, it's a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, onion, paprika, okay? That's what it is. You get the proportions right, which is what I'm trying to do. It's an excellent rub that you can make yourself. That's something that I've been enjoying doing is, is learning how to make different rubs at home. And there's books out there that teach you this stuff, and that's what I do. I, I read these books. And it's just, I like it so much better making my own blend of rub than to buying all that store-bought stuff that somebody else thinks tastes good. So, just personal preference, but you get a blend that you like, believe me, you're going to keep going with it. So, like I said, just put a little bit more of the seasoning of your choice on the veggies. Just like that. And once that chicken's done, we're going to dump these down in there and then we'll set our chicken on top of it. All right, it's time to pull the chicken out. Actually, I'm on the wrong side. In here with my tongs and just ever so slightly lift it up, just like that. All right. All right, so I went ahead and removed the pot from the heat. I got me a wooden spatula. I just wanted to kind of scrape the uh, the seasonings off the bottom and just kind of get them mixed up there. And now we're going to dump the uh, vegetables in there. 
that's a big chicken. I hope I got enough room for all this, but if it ends up being too tight, I'll just pull some of these out of there. So just give it a good mix. And try to put sort of like a little hole in the bottom here and just put like one layer of veggies to try to get the chicken down in it. But that's what's great about this deluxe pot is that the lid is kind of tall. So you have a little bit more room versus a conventional regular style Dutch oven. All right, so can you guys see that okay? Yeah, you can see that, all right. So let's take our chicken. I'm gonna scoop it up with the tongs here. Lay it down in there. Oh yeah, we got room, look at that. Perfect, just like that, all right? It's gonna be perfect. All right, and I'll take our lid. I'll reach over you and grab the lid here and just test it and make sure. Look at that, plenty of room. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and transfer this back to the, uh, to the cook stove there and get started on it. And then once we move it over there, we'll dump our hot coals on top. I'm just waiting on them, those uh, coals to get hot. While I'm waiting on those coals, there's a good look at the 12 inch. It's actually working really good. When I, when I uh, rub my hand over it like that, I can feel the heat coming around those holes. So I think that that technique for this gas stove is gonna work really well. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this transferred back onto the deflector plate here and Tell you what, I'm gonna have to use my little lift handle here. Look down, I gotta get it centered. So I'm just looking down, trying to make sure the side of the pot is even with the holes. And that's looking pretty good right about there, I believe. All right, let me go get the uh, charcoal. All right, here's our charcoal. Should be 16 hot coals right there. And I was looking for my other tongs. I don't know where they went. They're not out here. So we're, we're gonna take these coals here and evenly line them all the way around the perimeter of the pot. Just like that. And you should have a couple extra. I usually put those right in the middle like that. But put them around the outside and that heat will uh, spread evenly through that cast iron. Just like that right there. Now these are not gonna make it through the entire duration of this cook. These will last you no more than an hour out here like, like we got it. So what I'm gonna do in about 45 minutes, matter of fact, let me get my timer going right here. We're gonna go ahead and start timer just so I know when we started cooking. About 45 minutes in, I'm gonna go ahead and take another 16 coals and start getting them hot and get them ready to uh, transfer onto this uh, lid right here so that we can continue our cook. I found that what you wanna do is get the chicken up to temperature, obviously, and that's what you're shooting for. The veggies will be done. So in an hour, I'm gonna temp it and, and see where it's at. And I'm gonna guess we're probably gonna be somewhere around 150, maybe 155. So I'll put some fresh coals on there and we'll finish it out until we get to our, uh, we're, we're shooting for at least 165, 170 in the breast. All right. So we'll bring you back with some updates as we continue our cook here. So at this point, this is where I'm going to take my, uh, all my stuff I've been using the board and the utensils and knife. I'm going to go over to my, I got an area right over there next to the shop. I got a table right there. That's where I do my washing. So in between the cooks like that, that's when I wash all my dishes. So. You might have noticed that I set the uh, half cooked chicken back on this without washing it. And I did that because the chicken was not cooked yet. It was just partially cooked. So I still used it for that. Now I'm gonna go over and wash everything. It's gonna be nice and clean for whenever we uh, get ready to uh, take this inside and serve it up. And I found my uh, charcoal tongs. I always keep these handy just for uh, managing the charcoal. I had them in the pit barrel from the last cook. And then also my, uh, my leather welding gloves. I use for handling the hot pots. This is at the point of the cook where it's smelling so good out here. Everything's melding together and it's coming out of this little steam hole right here. Man, I can't tell you how good it smells. So we are exactly 45 minutes into our cook now. I wanna show you, if you come over here and just tap these guys, you see how small that little charcoal is now? So that means that we're actually starting to lose our, uh, our cooking heat that we need up on the top. 
but I'll tell you that um, it's cooking in a lot faster than I expected it to. Every time I do this, I get a little bit different result. It's not gonna be the same exact thing every single time. I've uh, just kind of used these numbers and times as a, uh, as a guideline there. So like the last time I did this over at mom's house, it, it took an hour before I ever started getting steam out of this hole right here. And uh, on this cook here in about 20 minutes in, I started getting really good steam out of it. So just goes to show you. So we, we definitely need to start some charcoal, but since it's been cooking so good, I wanna go ahead and check it, okay? So let's go ahead and we're gonna move those guys off out of the way. And I wanna check it. And we're gonna lift the lid, take a look at it for the first time since we closed it up. Look at that, it is looking beautiful. All right, I'm gonna get my uh, thermopop over here. Look at that boiling action down in there. You got the fat of the chicken down in there. You got the olive oil. It is looking good. So I'm gonna check the uh, breast in a couple sections here. See, not quite, 125 degrees there. So we're, we're right on where we need to be, okay? So we know we got plenty of cook still to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a new chimney of charcoal, another 16 charcoal. We'll get them over here and get them lit. I'll get them hot and I'm gonna pick this up, dump it off in my uh, fire pit and we'll put fresh coals on here and keep going. Alrighty, the uh, the new coals are ready to dump on here, so I'm going to go ahead and take this lid over to my fire pit behind you and just uh, shake all these coals off, all right? You get a good view of the chicken while I do that. Let's go ahead and give it a temp while I got the lid off. Get my uh, thermopop on. All right, let's get down in the middle of that breast and see where we're at. Yep, see we still got a little bit more. So we're right on time, we're right where I, I don't know if you can see that, probably got you upside down, but it says 143 there on the thermopop, okay? Probably gonna be going another 15 to 20 minutes, so I'm gonna put the lid on here and I'm gonna go grab the basket of hot coals. Just dump them on there. I tell you what, whenever you're doing this at night at the camp, this is such a beautiful sight, seeing these hot charcoal briquettes on the top of this oven. If you got like, uh, you know, a light going above you, which I usually do, I turn that off and it just gives you such a beautiful shot of this oven doing its thing with the hot charcoal on it right there. All right, there we go. So we are at, right at, look at this, just about one hour. See, so we're at one hour right now. I'm gonna let this go another 15 to 20 minutes and we should be at temp at that point there. All righty. We are at one hour and 15 minutes on our timer. So let's take a look and take a temp. Wow, that looks so good. All right, let's get down in there where we were at. It looks like we are there now. I'm getting 170 degrees down in the middle of that chicken breast there. It was 171. So we are ready to go. I am going to uh, get this thing off the heat. We're gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna dump these coals over in my uh, fire pit. I'm gonna transfer this inside and I will meet you inside and we'll go ahead and give this thing a carve and uh, taste test it. And let's we'll see how Abby likes it. All right, well, I think Abby's ready to uh, try this. Can you, you smell how good that smells? I was ready like an hour ago. This is one of those dishes, every time we cook it, as soon as it starts steaming out, you smell the fragrance of the chicken and all the vegetables cooking, and it's, it's hard to describe how good it smells, really. 
we'll go ahead and take our lid off here because we are ready yeah. to look at that it just looks great oh, the smell. all right so one of my personal favorites in the veggies here are the carrots now look at that so it's very tender see that see how tender it is but this is one of my favorites, and I hope it doesn't scald my mouth, but I want to try it's this right here. It's going to scald your mouth. Whoa. Yep. Mmm. <laughs> so good. Nice and sweet. Mm-hmm. Got a little, bit of, a little bit of a crust right there on the top. All right. I'm not going to try to drag this out too much. So let's go ahead and <laughs> down here. Oh, look, Lola. Lola. Lola showed up. Look, Lola. She always power. she always jumps in here. All right, we're going to carve you some uh, of the chicken breast here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That looks delicious. I know you don't like the skin, but there you go. Thanks, babe. I might try a piece of that right there. Mm -hmm. Let me get you another piece of the chicken breast right here. Heavy on the potatoes. Heavy on the potatoes. All right, so there's a couple pieces. You see how tender it looks right there? All right. So let's go ahead and uh, we're just gonna we're gonna do Abby right now. Let's. Uh, the chicken is taking up <laughs> all the room where all the veggies are at. I'm just gonna give you some. We will fix this after the video. But there is some potatoes. You want any more carrot? Uh, no. 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 Okay. <laughs> um, here's some more potato right there. Yes. Do you want any more juice? Uh, yes. Please. Look at that. Look at that juice right there. One more little. Perfect. Perfect. Gonna be very good. Gonna be good. All right. Let me. Um, I don't think Abby wants to be on video right now. I don't think she was prepared for it. So I'm gonna make me a plate here, and I'll give you my thoughts on the taste test. I have on my pajamas. She does. Lola. She's trying to get in here and get some chicken. Lola. Lola. <laughs> wow. She wants her chicken. All right, well, there's our serving right there. You can see that I got me a piece of chicken breast in there, potatoes, carrots, everything cooked down nice and tender. I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, a taste test to see just how it, just how it tastes. Excellent. Super juicy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Super juicy. There's one of the onion right there. And we got the um, the garlic is in there also. So you got the taste of the garlic mixed in there as well. So that recipe right there, it's actually really easy to cook that. It's a one pot meal right there. Everything goes in that and it's just delicious. So seasoning is going to be based on personal preference. You can just go salt and pepper on it if you want to. But this is a really good meal. I advise you to try it. Test it out for yourself. It's delicious. I think that it would also be really good with rice. I know that's like double starch. But I really think that if you had like a pot of rice and you put a little bit of rice in there, slice some chicken, put it on top there, and that some of that gravy that's down in the bottom with the veggies, I think that would make an excellent meal also, the uh, chicken and rice. So anyway, there is one of our favorite cast iron dishes, the uh, camp oven roasted chicken with root veggies. We love it. Go try it for yourself. We're going to go eat our meal. Yes, See you later. We are. Lola.